Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to be bringing together everything that we've been learning this week and actually selecting our short circuit ground fault protection size. What size inverse time breaker would you select for a three-phase, 10-horsepower, 460-volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 13.2 amps for short-circuit ground fault protection? Remember, when we're sizing short-circuit ground fault protection, we're never going to use the FLA or the nameplate rating. We're only going to use the FLC. So the first thing that we've got to point out is that it's three-phase, 10-horsepower, 460-volt. And the second thing that we want to point out is that it's also an inverse time breaker. Now we can go through and piece by piece make our selections. So first, we're going to find out what our FLC is. Is. So we're going to head to table 430.250 because it's three phase. On the left hand side, we're going to go down with our horsepower. Then we're going to come across the top, find our voltage, and we're going to go down and select our FLC. In this case, it's 14 amps. Now we're going to find out what our demand factor is in table 430.52. So when we get there, we start on the left-hand side with our type of motor. Then we're going to come across and our um, type of overcurrent protection is inverse time breaker. So when we tee off with it, we're going to find out that it's a demand factor of 250%. Now we have to do the math. We take 14 multiplied by 2.50. That's going to give us 35 amps. Now we have to head to table 240.6a and we're going to select our next standard size. Okay, so when we get there, we get to 240.6a, we find out that 35 is actually a standard size. Now that may not be one we use in the field very often, but when you're testing or if this were to be truly code legal, that would be the size breaker or fuse that you would have to select. So that's going to be our choice. And in this case, it's going to be 35 amps for our short circuit ground fault protection. Great job. All right, y'all, this is how we become a master. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Let's do it again. What size dual element fuse would you select for a three phase, five horsepower, 208 volt motor with a nameplate FLA of 15 amps for short circuit and ground fault protection? Let's set aside what type it is. It's a three phase, five horsepower, 208. Now let's make the distinction that it is a dual element fuse. Now let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we can solve the problem. First, we find our FLC. It's in table 430.250. We find out that it's 16.7 amps. Now we're going to find our demand factor in table 430.52. We find out that it is 175%. Now we're going to do the math. We take 16.7 multiplied by 1.75. That's going to give us 29.22 amps. We're going to drop it down. That's going to become 29. And we're going to head to table 240.6a to our next standard size overcurrent and we're going to select a 30 so that's going to be our choice 30 amp now that's going to be your first point of disconnect in your short circuit ground fault protection for this motor let's get to it What size dual element fuse would you select for a single phase, five horsepower, 115 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 52 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? First thing that we're going to pick out is that it's single phase, five horsepower, 115 volts. Then we're going to point out that it's a dual element fuse. Let's get to it. First, we're going to find what our FLC is, and this time we're in table 430.248. So we come there, we go on the left-hand side for our horsepower, we come across the top for our voltage, we go down and find out that our FLC is 56 amps. Now let's go find our demand factor. We head back to table 430.52, and we're going to start on the left-hand side, single phase, come over what type of overcurrent protection, and we're going to select 175% is the demand factor. Now we got to bear that math out. Do 56 multiplied by 1.75. That is going to give us 98 amps. Now we head over to table 240.6a. We're going to select the next standard size, and it's a 100 amp here, so that's going to be our choice. Our short circuit ground fault protection for this motor is going to be 100 amps.
All right, guys, I threw this in for a little bit of fun. I want you to hang with me, and this one's going to be a ball. All right, so what size instantaneous trip breaker would you select for a single phase, three horsepower, 230 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 15 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? So we make the distinction that it's single phase, three horsepower, 230, and we recognize that it's an instantaneous trip breaker. Now this is where the fun begins. So first we're going to find out our FLC, 430.248. We're going to find out that it's 17 amps. No big deal, right? Now we head to table 430.52, and this is where it gets fun. So we find out that our demand factor is 800%. So we're literally going to take 17 multiplied by 8. That's going to give us 136 amps. We head to table 240.6a. We make our next standard selection. That's going to be a 150 amp overcurrent device. Now, what's so amazing about this is that if you were to go size the wire, this is what you would end up with. You would take 17 multiplied by 1.25. And depending on the terminals and uh, several different factors let's say you selected a 10 gauge wire you could legally take that 10 gauge wire and put it on a 150 amp breaker for this short circuit ground fault protection and I was thinking about this it wouldn't even fit in the lug you would likely have to change over you know in some type of Polaris or Nimbus connector or some type of other lug you literally have to change over to a wire that would be listed to fit inside of that overcurrent device so it's just kind of funny I want you guys to think about that now if it was a fuse it might be a little bit easier but the lug Lugs may not even, you know, be big enough if it was, you know, a lug situation and then you popped a fuse in. So just want you guys to think about that one. But this is how you guys size it. I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, if you watch this video tomorrow, we're going to be dropping the compilation video where we put all the pieces together in one video for you. And if you practice, 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 we can all become masters together. I like to joke a lot and I say between all of us, we make one really good electrician. Let's go ahead and get to it. That's our lesson for today, but before we go, if this channel is helping you, inspiring you, motivating you, I just ask if you could please like and share it so more people can get it in. Let's get to it.